Hello, this is Parthi Chetty, Executive Director of the Eskom Expo for Young Scientists, and my organization won the 2019 NSTF Award in the NGO sector. Today, I'd like to talk to you about what we can learn from trees and nature and how these learnings can help to shape our lives and more especially for our young learners, how to shape your future careers. What are the foundations of your career which you may not be aware of? What does a tree do to create such foundations? And how is it that trees can grow for hundreds of years and even grow up to 100 meters tall without falling in the most vicious cyclones or hurricanes. Today, I'd like to talk to you about what we can learn from trees and nature and how these learnings can help to shape our lives and more especially for our young learners, how to shape your future careers. What are the foundations of your career which you may not be aware of? What does a tree do to create such foundations? And how is it that trees can grow for hundreds of years and even grow up to 100 meters tall without falling in the most vicious cycle? Let's start off with what our education system teaches us. The common name of this tree in South Africa is the leopard tree. Notice it has a trunk and goes into many branches right from the bottom. Now this is what our education system looks like, whereby we teach you many subjects at school level and you then choose what you are passionate about and you excel and you further your studies in that specific area that you are interested in. Now here's an example of another type of tree. This is a palm tree. It grows to great heights, thin and tall. It has large palm leaves that extend over five meters each. This tree can withstand extreme weather conditions like hurricanes and tsunamis. And the design of this tree is what is key to its existence. Now that we've seen what the palm tree looks like and how resilient it is and how it survived for thousands of years on islands that are not really protected from the harsh elements of nature like tsunamis and vicious hurricanes, how is it that the palm tree survives? And this similarity is what I would like to talk to you about as young learners. You need to create a career path. And I'm hoping that most of you will take up the sciences. And I'll explain why sciences are also equally important. Is that when you get into your career, it's going to spend a long time. Remember the number 40. Because that's how long you're going to spend in a career. And I'll touch a little more on that. When you choose your career, much like the palm tree grows tall and can live for a very long time and resist many disasters and changes, your career must do the same for you. So choose a career where you can excel, you can adapt, and you can live a long life, spending at least 40 years in a career. Now, why I mentioned 40 years is firstly, when you get out of school, get the best education you can. Invest in yourself. So you're going to study till about maybe 25 years of age. In South Africa, most people retire at the age of 65. So from 25 to 65, you're going to be in a career. And you'd better enjoy that career because 40 years is a long time. Many of you are going to spend 12 years in school alone. And for some of you who are in grades 10, 11, 12, may think that you've already spent a long time in school. But remember, you're going to spend another 40 years in a career. And you'd better like the career that you choose. And here's some tips on 
how to choose these careers. The best advice I can give you on choosing a career is choose the difficult things now so you don't spend the rest of your life working hard making a living. So choose a subject that may seem difficult but you would need. For example, the mathematics subjects, the sciences. These are things in much need in our current 21st century. You would need to acquire 21st century thinking skills that we all need to survive in this day and age. These are skills like communication and collaboration, digital literacy, research and innovation, and more importantly, problem solving and creativity is what we absolutely need. But these are not readily taught in your school syllabus. So you would have to still acquire these skills to survive in the 21st century. Some of you will be getting into careers that don't yet exist. I don't know what that may be like, but as an educator, what we could do is to prepare you as best we can so that whatever career you choose, you have the necessary skills to survive and to be able to collaborate with others, be creative, and more importantly, remember those critical thinking skills that leads to problem solving. And that's something else that's going to be very important to you, the youth of today. Let's just start with your subject at school. I'm not sure why many of you think the sciences are difficult, but science is easy. You can calculate the distance from Earth to the moon, and there's no measuring tape long enough to get there. But with science, we can, and there's a formula we apply, and we come to an answer of something like 384,000 kilometers away. And that's not difficult at all. So science is easy. Now, let's take our everyday lives. Let's assume your girlfriend or your partner comes home one day and shows off her new pair of jeans. And one question she'll ask you is, do I look fat in these jeans? Now immediately your response is no. And then she looks at you and says, you're just saying that, you don't even look. So then you take a look and then you say, well, maybe. Wrong answer yet again. And then she says, oh, now you are saying I look fat. What is wrong with you? You don't like the clothes I bought. And it goes on and on and yet, you thought science was difficult? When in life you think there are just two answers, like yes and no, think again. So in life, not everything may be as simple. But in the sciences, we have formulae. It's either right or wrong. And the other good thing about getting involved in the sciences is that you can start applying your mind and you can conduct research which brings out this inner curiosity within you. It's in every one of us. I'm sure at some stage you ask a question like, why is the grass green? Why is the sky blue? Science answers all these questions in a very logical way. So I encourage you is to commit yourself to your studies. Try and take up as many science fields as you can. There's a whole range of them out there. Because in the next five to 10 years, you are going to be shaping your career for which you're going to spend the next 40 years in. And as I said before, if you're going to spend that much of time in a career, make sure that you are happy in your career. One of the ways you can get involved in the sciences is by participating in a whole range of Olympiads and competitions across the country. Uh, one of the biggest and the most popular is the uh, ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists, whereby we create future scientists and engineers for tomorrow. Mark Shuttleworth was one of our participants in the 80s. And later on, we had Sia Bulile Tusa in 2006, who also participated in Expo. He then won a Harvard scholarship 
and he even did a stint at NASA. Can you believe that? A South African going all the way to work at NASA. And all because he pursued his passion of research. So you can be the next seer. You can be the next rocket scientist. You could be the next billionaire like Mark Shuttleworth. And there's a host of other influential people in South Africa that have come through this way. So I wish you well. Uh, invest in your studies at an early age. And remember, you've got to be passionate. Follow your passion. And that will give you a lifetime of happiness.